Is that the Osmo camera? Is that GoPro? Well, you got it all fancy with the little, what do they call that? The uh, over top of your speaker there. The cat's tail and all that stuff. Oh man, it's fancy. So new for 2020 is all of our injected core technology things. So we've got a couple of spoons. This is our first venture into uh, hard ICT. So there's uh, the flutter shad, which is a jigging spoon. And uh, we've got the flutter sardine available in a saltwater model, uh, which actually won uh, ICAST best saltwater hard bait back in July. And then we've got the erratic shiner, which is a casting spoon. So four different sizes and 10 colors. Uh, and that one ICAST best uh, freshwater hard lure and we've got the freestyle frog which is like a buzz buzz style frog so rig it up on uh, Texas rig and just cast it out and burn it over top of uh, in, in grass and stuff and they get eaten pretty good and then we've got the slow roll shiner uh, which is a soft plastic swim bait and the ghost tail minnow which is a, which is a drop shot bait so all of our ICT stuff um, kind of follows the concept of uh, the inner core and then the uh, the exoskin so the inner core is where the the profile comes from and the appearance and then the exoskin is the uh, action driving mechanism of the bait so when you merge the two together you're left with a ultra realistic soft plastic and they're really durable too with the paint being on the inside they uh, they stand up pretty well so be sure to check them out it's all the new injected core technology stuff from live target hey what's up guys I'm at the nation a booth here and he's gonna explain to us he's the creator of these awesome lures and he's gonna explain to us a little more about his lures okay I'm Hiroshi Nishine from Nishine Rural Works uh, we are located in St. Catherine Ontario uh, we actually a local company okay. so can I show our product yeah of course so this is our basic crankbait it's called Chippo RV in this one fat body but uh, flat sided crankbait very easy to use right and also this crankbait has uh, you know braided model the braids be underneath the body and make a you know more noise reflection a little more flash a little more noise yep. and get more aggressive bite nice reaction bite nice reaction bite and this one is a deeper model okay yep. big nice yeah, big lip yeah same idea yep uh, dives to nine feet with uh, 16 pound 16 pound floral carbon okay and this one is our new uh, jack bait. We just launched this one two weeks ago. Okay, that's really uh, pretty. It's, it's called Airy 95 SD. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah, so good thing about this jack bait is uh, you don't have to walk hard. Okay. Uh, you just make a light twitch. Twitch, twitch. Uh, and it gives you its nice... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very easy to use. Very easy to use. Very flat sided. Uh, make a big, big uh, side to side. Okay, big, action. big, big action. Yeah, yeah. Very easy to use. Very okay. Easy to use. So, uh, this stuff oh, is our smell pad. It's designed for swim bait fishing. Right. So, if you fish vertical, uh, swim bait uh, always stay horizontal like that. That's great. Yeah, good balance. Good balance. Right. Yeah, and also if you cast it, uh, just swim a uh, little bit head down, so easy to keep the uh, same water crumb. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now we got lots of fish, Off not of only bass. Everything. Oh, everything. 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 Uh, if you put the, uh, you know. Uh, Swim bait, you just cut off the head yep. and put this one. It's a perfect mud. Let me give them a little yeah, more yeah. better of a view yeah. there. It's really pretty, really, really, really life looking. Nice catch everything. That's really nice. Okay, thank you. Uh, this one, the, our uh, jig, uh, it's a uh, Nishine Finesse football jig. Okay. Yeah, I designed this one for 
uh, smallmouth. Okay. Yeah, I usually fish in Lake Fury. So if you guys check that out, look at the bait keeper that he put on there. Is yeah. that a hand tied bait keeper? A hand tied bait keeper. That's awesome. Yeah, because this, this is very costly, but it's worth it because right. we fish in Lake Fury a lot. Uh, you know, lots of goby right. and small fish wants to try to steal the plastic. Right. But plastic has to be here because we make long drift. No, that's that's a really good addition yeah, yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, this one has a flat bottom. Is that this Sorry. one works uh, sled? Okay. Not less snug than common flat bulgy. Okay. And then uh, this one uh, is a, my my secret. <laughs> Uh, I use a metal snap okay. when I use a you know, uh, football jig because we got a lot of zebra muscle on the bottom. Right. The, the football jig uh, sometimes deflect the cover like that and got the damage of the knot. Right. So, so you'll, get a, you'll get your line cut off? Or, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you put small piece of this one, that saves the jig a lot. Oh, that's yeah, good. Five, five times more. That's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no. This one. Our uh, drop shot bait. They're very soft. Okay, I didn't know you made soft plastics too. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah this one designed for drop shot bait. Okay. Um, Usually I use a nose hook. Nice finesse. Nice finesse. Very soft. You don't actually you don't need to shake. That the current makes really good traction. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It works so good. Um, this one is coming in this spring. Oh. It has a whisker. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a catfish imitation. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking the bass eat more catfish uh, fry. Okay. What we saw. Okay. What yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. you're starting to see more often. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because they live together, right? Right. Same habitat. Right. And small catfish cannot swim fast. Right. And high protein. And also no no scales mm -hmm. and they had little, little spine but no poison and it's much easier very, to eat yeah very good very easy to eat yeah <laughs> i got lots of five pound um, <laughs> large mass and small mass sometimes what, what lakes are you fishing here in ontario uh lake Perry, okay nine river and lake, Ont uh, lake ontario okay yeah 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 awesome yeah, and some local small way okay yeah yeah and you, you go to simcoe anytime yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah I, I catch lots of uh, four pound uh, large mouse on this one. On that guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah I just keep into the dog. I yeah. Just wait and one twitch. Boom. You're skipping these guys. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, very easy to skip. <laughs> yeah, you, can you feel this? It's very heavy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah those would be easy uh, to skip. Yeah. It has a good to weight skip. to it. Yeah, yeah. Has a really interesting texture. Yeah, very good texture. Right. right. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that, that, that. Okay. Black and blue. Yeah, black green and blue. pumpkin. Green pumpkin and attach atta three, three o or four hook. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or this one uh, we call uh, nekiri. Uh, do you know po uh, Taro Murata? Taro, Taro Murata. Taro Murata. He's my my uh, friend. Okay. And he, he's uh, guiding the Lake Simco. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he he just makes a. Uh, neko rig and wacky so rig. Nick, so he nickel rigs these. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then, okay. Yeah, that's so, a wacky rig there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put the big, you know, uh, wide gap hook. Uh, this one sinks like that. Uh, stay there. And if you twitch, one twitch, uh, usually neko rig moves uh, like that. Right. But this one, if you put hook here, this one swims sideways. Oh, okay. Uh, just jump, one, one, one small jump. Okay. Maybe get a lot of trigger, uh, re uh, reaction bite. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's try, awesome. Try this, try this. Okay, we'll try this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome, guys. Check that out. You yeah. can you can hook this different ways. You yeah. can, different presentations. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the full lineup here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Talking about sight fishing with electronics. How many of y'all like to do that? I'm sure you do it a lot up here. Sight fishing with your electronics. And uh, I'm with, you know, there's... Of course, there's uh, different companies out there, but when it comes to 2D uh, uh, sight fishing or 2D, we're using 2D sonar. Uh, I, of course, I use Lowrance, and I truly do believe they have the best 2D on the market, hands down. And many, many, many people will agree with me on that. But one thing I want y'all to understand about when you are 2D, and so now we have... Uh, live sight which looks ahead so you have screens that you can put your screen on looking ahead 
or you can put it on 2D, which is down. So whenever you're using 2D, 2D is basically, which would be right below your trolling motor. Thank you. Yeah, whatever. I need something fidgeting in my hand because I get like just crazy up here without something in my hand. <gasps> I'm not gonna get you. So we got 2D, which is basically you, you have your puck that goes down. And 2D is nothing but sending echoes down. That's how it all works. But below your trolling motor, you're going to have a cone area. So it's, it's basically an upside down cone that goes down. And as you get deeper and deeper, it broadens its horizon. So when you're, when you're looking down there with your trolling motor, you have a cone. The biggest myth and I'll argue with Aaron Martins, I'll argue with Brent Ayler, Cody Meyer, I will blow the myth out of the water. You cannot tell the difference in size of the fish by looking at that spaghetti noodle, okay? It's impossible, you can't do it. There's no way to verify it or unverify it. Because I can take a drop shot sinker that is this big, okay? This big and drop it right below my cone, get it center punched of my cone, which means if my cone is down like this, I can have it center punched in the center and it's gonna look like a big fish. And it's simply something the size of my nail, okay? What I wanna to explain to you is this. The more center punched that the object is or the fish, bluegill, shad, drop shot sinker, little robo worm, whatever it is, the more center punched it is, the more direct it is, the stronger signal it's gonna send. Now if you have a cone here and a fish comes in the cone area just a little bit, he could be a five pound bass, but it's only hitting little parts of him and not center punched, it comes back up and draws a little line, right? And you see a little line and there, most people think, oh, that's a little fish. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, 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 shut up. No, no. And I can take my drop shot sinker and draw that big fish the same way it is. So when you are 2 d or looking at 2D, it is all based on how center punch they are. So if you see a weak spaghetti noodle, which is a little line that draws the fish out on 2D, don't disregard that as a small fish or a big fish or whatever. It has nothing to do with it. And one bad thing about it is, but typically when the water's clear, you don't have, they're going to see your bait wherever you drop it. Now, do I have a breakdown that says, okay, if you're in 10 foot of water, your cone is 11 feet round. And when you hit 20 foot water, your cone is 20 feet round. And when you go to 25 foot, I don't have a, I don't have a system. I don't know, but I just know you don't know if they're to your, you don't know if you're to your right or your left. But what you can do is if you start seeing a weak spaghetti noodle come into your screen, it may be a 20 yard, 20, 20, uh, 20 feet cone that you're scanning down at the bottom, I can turn the trolling motor a little bit to the left, and if that spaghetti noodle gets strong, like becomes stronger, then where is he at? To the right. If I turn and the spaghetti noodle goes a little bit weaker, where is he at? It's to my, well, to y'all's right, but to my left, okay? You can dictate a little bit by just turning the trolling motor one bit. So you can, if I go, if a weak signal's coming in and I take my boat and go this way a little bit and it got stronger, I'm dropping straight below my trolling motor. If I turn this way and it got a little, stayed weak, then I'm just going straight back over here. And typically you're in clear water anyways. Within that cone, typically they see it. If they didn't, if you didn't see them chase it down, you just kind of, let it soak in that little section and he's probably looking around.
I like that. I like that about fluorocarbon. Um, we talked about the feedback. Um, this is something that I found out by accident. I think I talked about this a little bit on my first seminar the first day I got here. This is probably the number one reason that I will use it for certain situations. I was trying to get some underwater footage for, for a YouTube video. I hope you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you don't, you, you, you kind of, you're a sorry human being, you should. <laughs> and, and the law is looking for you if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel. I will make sure you will be found and prosecuted to the fullest extent. But I like the fact that I was trying to get some underwater footage of a net rig one time. I had it on fluorocarbon, braided fluorocarbon setup. And I was trying to work the bait to show the camera guy, the guy that was using the GoPro underwater, I was trying to show him, you know, just make it dance, just make it do something like you would normally be doing fishing. Dude, I was pulling that bait when I was just doing like this, I was pulling it six or seven foot at a time. I had no clue, I was just barely turning the handle and just working it, pulling the bait that much every time I would do it. Put the same bait, same weight, same rod, same reel, straight fluorocarbon, and I reduced the distance almost in half. So if I was pulling it, when I thought I was just shaking the rod tip and pulling it, if I was, let's just hypothetically say, if I was pulling it six foot, putting it on straight fluorocarbon, and I started you know, doing the same action with the rod tip, all of a sudden now I'm only pulling it three and a half, four foot. That's a big deal. That's a big, big difference. That can make a huge difference. Sometimes, not all, there's gonna be days, y'all know how it is. I mean, some days where you could throw a paper clip in the water and they bite. Y'all know that don't happen that often, especially in a tournament situation. There's gonna be days where, when we fished the Pan, Pan American, I was using straight fluorocarbon, and it was windy, I could throw that thing in, in a light spot I'd see in the grass, and you could just sit there and hold it, and it would not move. I needed that bait to stay in that place a lot longer. Could have been the reason that we won. We won just by just a few ounces. That could have been the difference. That's a situation where I really, really like to use straight fluorocarbon, where I want to keep that bait in the strike zone longer. Maybe that's a tube. Now, let's say, I know you guys do a lot of cracking the tube here. I've, I've heard, I've heard other, peop other people, I haven't really got to do it a whole bunch. I've caught a few fish cracking the tube, but I've heard a, another one, a buddy of mine say he likes to use straight fluorocarbon for cracking the tube because of that sponginess. You know, you're, that's a high impact way of fishing. You're, you're really putting a lot of motion behind that rod tip and that bait when you're working it and having that fluorocarbon, when you go, <laughs> when you go to crack that tube and one's got it, he's locked down on it, you probably want, something's got to give. It's going to be your rod, your reel, your knot, or your line. One of them's going to break if you, if you straight fluorocarbon, you know, fluorocarbon and just using, you know, six or eight pound test. If you upgrade the, the, the pound test of your leading material, obviously you'll probably be okay. But if you're throwing eight pound test and you're cracking that tube, just shh, 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 let it sink it. You go to crack it, and he's just sitting there holding it like he can be sometimes. And it probably might not be good. You go to crack it, unless you got the right rod action. So it's just having that little bit of forgiveness and that floor carbon sometimes can work for you. Now let's move on uh, and talk about reasons why I do like to use braided fluorocarbon, which is really popular right now. I think I think most of us are kind of getting in line. Everybody else, the pros are using braided fluorocarbon, so I'm just going to use it. Let's talk about why. When you start to know why you use it, then it's, it becomes more obvious why you may want to use fluorocarbon or you maybe you do want to use braided fluor, braided fluorocarbon combo. As far as I know, that whole setup with braided fluorocarbon started with salt water. As far as I know, I could be completely wrong. I know the guys that I heard about it first from, from the salt water. One of the advantages of having a braid to fluorocarbon setup that nobody really talks about is it allows you to be very versatile with your line size. Obviously braid is gonna be a much smaller diameter. So now I can upsize this, the pound test that I'm using on my spinning reel. I'm gonna use 15 pound test on my spinning reel or 20, which is probably not gonna ever break 15 or 20 pound test braid. Try that with fluorocarbon or mono. Put that on your 3000 series reel and then send me an email without cussing <laughs> or swearing as you say up north. That don't work. That, that just does not work, dude. That's like putting bicycle tires on a bus. 
that crap ain't gonna never work. You cannot, it, 15 pound test, nothing works good on, on a 3,000 size spinning reel. But with braid, now all of a sudden you can put some line size, a line size on your, on your spinning reel that you can do just about anything with. So I can have a 15 pound test main line and then on my leading material, maybe I use six or eight pound test. I've been doing some saltwater fishing myself and we'll use 15 to 20 pound test braid and then I'll have a 15 to 20 pound test leader because of the muscles that we fish around. So I know, I know you guys have a lot of muscles around here. That's the whole purpose in using braid. Those muscles cut that small six, five, six, seven pound test line. They cut it just like that. But maybe your water is just not really that muddy or not that clear, I'm sorry. And you need to upsize your line. Now you can use the 12 pound test. When I won Seminole, I, I know you guys, if you watch Seminole when I won, I caught a couple fish on a wackier egg. Homeboy wasn't using an eight pound test at Seminole on that hydrilla. I was using a 15 pound test line, fluorocarbon leader. I was using 20 pound test braid with a 15 pound test leader material. And everybody saw me with a spinning run. I was like, ah, oh, you always with the fair one, all the yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, homie, I was using some real line out there. But I needed to present my bait. Remember what we talked about when I first got here? I needed something I could present that white wacky rig with that wasn't gonna work on a bait caster that ain't gonna work to try to cast a trick worm that's weightless on a bait caster and get any kind of distance that don't work on a bait caster so you take that spinning rod we got the luxury and the technology of braid to fluorocarbon that lets me present that bait right now all of a sudden I can still use the same size line that I would use on my bait casting setup I put it on the spinning reel I can present it bait present it right and I got enough backbone, enough rod, enough line that if I get a seven pounder on, he can get in my boat. That's where your mind needs to be on the fishing line. So every time you see a spinning rod, every time you pick up your spinning rod, don't always think that that's a, that's a six, eight pound test deal. Whole beauty of having a braid to floor carbon setup, I take one rod, one reel, and all my, my baseline of spool of line, can be 20 pound test and on the on the the actual section that's connected to my bait or whatever i'm fishing where there's swim bait and wacky rig a miko a ned rig or whatever i can take that the piece of line that's that long and switch it from six pound test to 20 pound test whatever i need to do for the situation that's the whole beauty of having a braided floor carbon set up that i don't think people talk about a lot we just automatically go to spinning rod light line and it doesn't have to be that way because honestly, as much as I fish finesse, my, my style of fishing finesse is really kind of jacked up. It's not really what people think it is. It's, it's just, I use spinning rods a lot because spinning rods allow me to pre present the bait that I want to fish the best way and most efficiently way. That's why I use them a lot. That, that, that's it. It has nothing to do because I'm a spinning rod guru. No, like this is the best tool for the job. You can't unbolt a half inch bolt with a three quarter inch socket. Don't work. Same way with fishing reels. Saying you gotta have the right tool for the right job. That's, that's all it is. Another thing about braid to fluorocarbon setup, obviously there's no stretch, better hook penetration on long cast. You need to take a bait, get it way out there. I don't care if that's a swim bait. I don't care if that is a wacky rig. If it's anything that I throw out and I let it hit the bottom and you know I, I wanna throw it out, hit the bottom, feel the bite, set the hook, it's probably gonna be braid to fluorocarbon most of the time unless it's something like we talked about earlier, if it's a windy condition or something like that. Almost always go braid to fluorocarbon. Um, having no stretch and the extra sensitivity, it just works out for you better. If you ever watch me fish on YouTube, one, one mistake I think people make with, with the spinning rods or light line is trying to set the hook way too hard. You ain't gotta do all of that, boss. You ain't gotta do it. I used to be bad about it. If you're breaking off a lot, just stop setting the hook. I learned this from my little boy. I don't know if y'all heard me say this the other day when I was up here. I have a, it was seven years old now, but when he was younger, when he was four or five years old, I'd take him fishing, I'd tie him a net rig on and just let him throw it. And he would get one on, I'd see the line just swimming off. And I'd look at him like, son, are you ever gonna set the hook? Or do you not feel that line? Like, you know, what are you doing? Set the hook, son. He, he, one, he would jump, Red wouldn't even know he got him on. He'd fish be out there jumping. He's like, Daddy, is that my fish job? I'm like, yes, son, set the hook, reel, do something. <laughs> like, just, yeah, <laughs> I had a dad over here knows what I'm talking about. And he's like, 
He's like, okay. And he just reels the same speed. Never would lose one. Never would lose one. So I learned real fast. All that, that I was doing, trying to whoosh, all of that He-Man hook set stuff that I was doing and losing them, I wasn't, I wasn't doing myself any justice at all. What I learned real fast is the hook's already exposed. You got braided floor carbon set up. He's, most of the time when a fish bites, he bites it and he goes in some direction to the side, left or right or to the back. If you're just right back, reel down on that fish, you feel the bite, don't throw it out there, it hits the bottom, don't. If you're just reel down, reel the line tight and just pull, turn your shoulders. That's about all you gotta do. And you'll, you'll lose weight. I'm not gonna say you're gonna lose every fish. I'm not gonna say you're gonna catch every fish. I guarantee you'll start losing fewer fish if you just call it. And this is hard. I mean, you're gonna have to train yourself. I guess hard because I mean, I mean, you gotta admit we don't. Some, some for some of us going fishing, that's like a stress reliever. So we want to lay the freaking hammer to him, dude. Like when you want bite, it's like you like. Pfft. It's like you black out and you turn into a different person, right? You get like a different person. Like I am gonna knock his like. You lose all sense of conservation. We're always telling you, you're a conservation hold the fish while you tell, dude, because you don't want to break his lip. And then we like, <laughs> you know, so like we lose conservation. We don't even think about conservation when we're setting the hook. So we, you know, it's going to take some training to get yourself used to like, okay, you got to calm down. And you just, you just reel down on him and just turn your leg, just turn your shoulders. You'll catch more fish. You'll hook up with him just fine. You won't lose him. I promise you. I promise, especially on some of those techniques where the, the hook is already exposed. Ned rigs, wacky rigs, drop shots, you know, obviously depending on how you rig your drop shots. So there's a, a little bit, a little bit there about, um, about why I like to start talking about donuts in the middle of the line. It's, it's mostly about spinning tackle in my line applications for the most part, but you know why? Because where do you have the most line management problems? The spinning reels and light line. That's where, that's where it becomes more important. That's why I'll spend, I'll spend 800 bucks on a spinning setup, but it's hard to get me to spend much more than 300 bucks on a bait casting setup. You know why? Because with that light line or any kind of light tackle application, everything's got to be perfect for you to be able to present your bait right and not break your line. On a bait casting setup where we use typically using at least 12, but most of the time 15 and bigger, just the, the tolerance there, you don't you don't have to be quite as tight on the tolerance of what you're doing. 15 pound test, 20 pound test, it don't matter, man. Just get it out there. Somehow, just get it out there the best way you can. When you start using six, eight pound test line with small baits and light, lightweight stuff, dude, your tackle's gotta be right. Your rod reel and your line size and your reel size, all that stuff's gotta be right. All the way down to the, the rod you're using, the eyes, even the eyes on your rod has a lot to do with it. I'm real particular about that stuff when it comes to those rods. I only have one rod I use for spinning, spinning gear now for all applications. I got that picky about it. Um, so I, that's why this conversation, you hadn't heard me talk about 50 pound test braid and 20 pound test floor carbon and all that because generally speaking, when you start getting into those bigger pound tests, it, it don't matter no more. Not as much, not as much. You can use whatever you want to use, however you want to use it. I will say this, um, I, you heard me mention a little bit about mono becoming more taboo to use. It's, it, it would be, it would be a about as taboo if you saw me standing on this stage with bell bottoms and an afro. <laughs> like, nobody uses that no more. It's like, what is that guy? When you start talking about using mono, people are like, that dude's stupid. Nobody uses mono no more. It's because they don't, they don't understand it and everybody's just getting behind whatever everybody else says. Whatever, what the pros say, they say use fluorocarbon because it's the best. Everybody just assumes it, takes it, takes it for whatever we say. Mono needs to be in your boat, guys. Mono needs to be in your boat. It is a very useful tool for a lot of different situations. One for me that I use mono for is cranking. Cranking light lures on bait casters. Let's say that shad wrap that I was talking about, maybe I don't want to throw it on a, bait, on a spinning rod for that particular day. Mono casts very well, it's very manageable, it's very friendly. If you've got kids that you're wanting to try to get them to transition from spinning rods to bait casters, don't give them fluorocarbon. Not because it's expensive. Fluorocarbon is a pain in the butt to deal with. It's a bad boss. It's, it's not that easy to deal with. I don't care what your manufacturer is. 
you bull crap if you think, oh, well, yeah, I'll use that this line because it's so, man, you bull crap. All of it's hard. Just the nature of the material is harder than mono. And the reason is, just not to get into a whole deep conversation, fluorocarbon, all the airspace is screed out of the line, so it's a denser product. Mono has air spaces in it, or voids in it, which makes it, compromises some of the, the value of the line, but it makes it more manageable because it's more pliable, it's softer material. So it actually throws really good on a, on a spinning rod and a bait caster. And one of the reasons I like to use it for cranking a little bit, and it's just certain situations, like I mentioned the shad wrap, it throws really good. Since that line is not, doesn't have as much memory of as many coils or as a much softer material, it just exits the reel so much more smoothly. The downside is, you know, it absorbs water because it has those voids in it, it absorbs water, so it doesn't, doesn't last as long. So you can fish it throughout the course of a day, and about after you fish it about three quarters of the day, you'll start getting a lot of line twist and start having problems with your line. But it's just because the crankbait has a tendency when you throw it, it goes up in the air and does a helicopter and you get some line twists and so forth. It doesn't matter because the mono is cheap. You can go somewhere here right now and probably buy as many packs as you want for $5 a piece or $10 a piece, whatever. whatever. I don't know. Y'all got Canadian. I don't know what it is here, but it's cheaper. It's cheaper. Probably a third of what fluorocarbon is. You're going to have a few problems, but it's so much easier to manage. Like if it's windy, don't try to use windy and cold, and you try to use fluorocarbon on bait caster to throw a, a little light balsa crankbait or a shad wrap or something like that. You're gonna be cussing. You're gonna, you're gonna lose your salvation. That's probably what you're gonna do. You're not gonna, be, you're not gonna be a very good person at the end of the day. But you can take that, take mono, and you can remember what we talked about at the beginning of the conversation. Now I can present my bait a lot more efficiently with the mono because it's easier to throw. It's easier to use has nothing to do with, you're not gonna break one off on mono. Don't let anybody talk you into it. Even I've got friends that are professionals like, dude, you throw mono? I'm like, yeah. Like, man, I, you don't lose fish on that? I'm like, no. Beating your butt right now with mono. Thank you. <laughs> it, it ain't gonna break on you, I promise you. In fact, it's a little bit better around in certain situations. The guys in salt water where they have a lot of barnacles and stuff in the water, they use straight mono because it doesn't break off and, in the barnacles and the shells. I guess for us as freshwater fishermen, we don't have it where I live, but I think you guys have like, it was the muscle, muscles, zebra mussels? Probably be a little bit better in those certain situations. The other thing is it doesn't hang as bad with crankbaits like a shadow wrap. Shadow wrap is a great crankbait. Boy, it'll hang in any kind of wood that it finds. It finds wood. Like I feel like a, like a, a shadow wrap would go by a log and like, like just sucks to the wood. It's like it's got something in it that just draws the crankbait to wood. It's like a magnet or something. I didn't even know wood could be magnetized like that, but I think it does with, with a shad wrap. It's something about mono having that little bit of sponginess in it. When you go to run that crankbait over a piece of wood, it'll just, instead of just digging in and rolling over and, and the hooks catching that wood, something about it having that little bit of sponginess that'll let it just roll over a log, or roll over wood, come over that rock just right. And it, if it just hangs up five or six times less, that's a big deal for me. And it should be for you because you're going to get to spend more time on the water. So don't, don't discount mono just yet. I know it's taboo and I know nobody really uses it and talks about it. But in certain situations where you're cranking, you're new to bait casting, you're having a lot of problems with your fluorocarbon just, just blowing up on your, on your bait casters, think about just kind of going to, to, uh, to mono a little bit. But thank you all for... Um, for taking the time to listen to me. Hope you'll take some of that stuff to heart. I'm gonna hang out, uh, I'll hang out here for a few minutes too, but um, I'll be over to the CSFL booth. I have a hard time saying it, CSFL booth. If you wanna chat anymore. All right guys, we got Joey here with Shimano. He's gonna go over a couple of new things for 2020. How's it going? Joey DeShanzo, Shimano booth, like he was saying. Um, we got the new Stratic FL. Uh, big major feature that we came out with compared to the FK. We got a long stroke spool on it. Line moves less up and down, less friction, further cast. Essentially, you'll see here that we got the X Protect. That's a channel labyrinth inside the reel that filtered down from the Stella and it actually keeps the water out. So you'll notice there's no maintenance ports on the outside of the reel. So there's no water that's gonna be able to get inside. If I had to compare this to one reel on the market, 
It's a Stella at a quarter of the price. Oh, okay. Super smooth drag, super smooth. And what are reeling. those going for? So these are 289. Okay. Um, another major feature, micro module gears with silent drive. So you're gonna notice. You hear nothing. You can't well. hear anything, right? Right on. And we'll just do it for sake of argument. Here's the Stella. Same thing. I almost dropped that reel. <laughs> you can't hear anything. Now, I'm gonna take the camera here for a second. And give it to the man. So there's the Stella. Oh, that is super smooth. Right? Oh, right on. So I hope I hope I conveyed everything that I did. So um, next up, new to the North American market, which is insane because I mean I do a lot of JDM stuff and I'm sure as you look at a lot of JDM stuff too so you've probably heard of this this is the new twin power that came out and again a lot of these things are starting to filter down from the Stella because not everybody can afford a thousand dollar reel right these are 589 again long stroke spool X protect silent drive and fine tuning so you're gonna notice your tolerances on this are super tight and half the weight Give that a feel. Oh my god. Yeah. That is really nice. Yeah. And again, it comes with all the sealed drags. Um, I forgot to mention that on the FL2. Right Up on. underneath, we got that washer. Um, okay. Everything so maintenance to the minimum, basically. Again, same thing. Right? That's awesome. Um, and I'm assuming really you're Canadian smooth. as well. Yep. Maintenance goes down in Peter. Okay. So That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we'll just we'll break over to the casting. Oh, we'll get over to some bait casters. Now. Yeah, because uh, this year, I'm sure you've heard, the big craze is the new metanium. Yes, now, that one, the big thing that we got here, solid core body. So there's actually only three pieces. You got one, two, three on the gearbox. We moved away from the aluminum gears in the metanium MGLs, and now we got the new MGL with a brass gear. Super smooth, like butter. It's you're gonna be your power fishing rail. So you'll flip jigs with it, throw crankbaits with it. And again, so all the speeds or yeah, so we got three speeds. We got six two, we got the seven one right here, and we got the eight one. The eight one two, I've been getting a lot of questions about it. The eight one does come with a bigger handle, so it's the winch handle. So you'll get an extra little bit of torque. Yeah. So give that a feel. I don't know if you're a righty or a lefty, but I'm a lefty, but this feels nice and smooth. Super cool. And then again, we went to the SVS Infinity on the side here. Right on. So you got the brake adjustment here, and you got the brakes. On and this is one side. solid body. Yes. Nice. So those market right now for 619. Okay. Uh, these right-handers are going to be available in the next month. And then for us lefties, you're going to get them in end of April, beginning of May. Okay. Um, and I'll just show you how to quickly open this here. And for those of you, because I actually had a couple people yesterday say I lost the side plate on my MGLs. They got a washer in here that's going to keep everything super tight. And then with that screw, right, pop it in and it's all flush. That's pretty cool. Yeah, bud. Awesome. No worries. Well, guys. That's what's coming out new for 2020 for Shimano. Thanks to Joey here. How's it going, guys? Thank you so much. Um, I don't want to plug huge, but Swimbait Addicts on YouTube, Joey DeChenzo on Instagram. If you guys want to follow along with all the stuff that I got, and uh, maybe we'll connect one day. Sweet. Thanks, awesome, Joey. Buddy. Hey, take it easy. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Make sure you follow the guys. Subscribe, like, and share all his videos. See you guys. <laughs>